Hi everyone, my name is Fatima. I'm a dentist. Today we will talk about enamel structure and composition. Enamel is the most mineralized tissue of the body, forming a very hard, thin, translucent layer of calcified tissue that covers the entire anatomic crown of the tooth. It can vary in thickness and hardness on each tooth, from tooth to tooth and from person to person. It can also vary in color, from yellowish to grayish white, depending on variations in the thickness, quality of its mineral structure, and surface stain. Enamel has no blood or nerve supply within it. It is enamel's hardness that enables teeth to withstand plant heavy masticatory force. Enamel is so hard because it is composed primarily of unorganic material. 95% to 98% of it is calcium and phosphate ions that make up strong hydroxy appetite crystals. Yet, these are not pure crystals because they are carbonated and contain trace minerals such as strontium, magnesium, lead, and fluoride. This factor makes biological hydroxy appetite more soluble than pure hydroxy appetite. Approximately 1% to 2% of enamel is made up of organic material, particularly enamel specific proteins, called enamelins, which have a high affinity for binding hydroxy appetite crystals. Water make up the remainder of enamel, accounting for about 4% of its composition. The unorganic, organic, and water components of enamel are highly organized. Millions of carbonated hydroxy appetite crystals are arranged in long, thin structures called roots that are 4 micrometer to 8 micrometer in diameter. It is estimated that the number of roots in tooth range from 5 million in lower lateral incisor to 12 million in upper first molar. In general, root extends at right angle from the dental enamel junction to the tooth surface. Surrounding each root is a root sheath made up of a protein matrix of enamelins. The area between root is called interroot enamel or interroot cement. While it has the same crystal composition, crystal orientation is different. Distinguishing roots from interroot enamel. Space exit where crystals do not form between roots, called porous. They contribute to enamel's permeability, which allows fluid movement and diffusion to occur. But they also cause variations in density and hardness in the tooth, which can create spots that are more prone to demineralization. And the demineralization is the loss of calcium and phosphate ions when oral pH becomes too acidic and drops below 5.5 in demineralization. The crystalline structure shrinks in size while porous enlarge. Enamel is formed by epithelial cells called ameloblasts. Just before a tooth erupts from the gum, the ameloblasts are broken down, removing enamel's ability to regenerate or repair itself. This means that when enamel is damaged by injury or decay, it cannot be restored beyond the normal course of remineralization. When a tooth erupts, it is also not fully mineralized. To completely mineralize it, the tooth, calcium, phosphate, and fluoride ion are taken up from saliva. To added a layer of 10 micrometer to 100 micrometer of enamel over time. There are conditions that can affect the formation of enamel and thus increase the risk of caries. This includes the genetic disorder amelogenesis imperfecta, in which enamel is never completely mineralized and flakes off easily exposing softer dentine to cardiogenic bacteria. Other conditions are linked with increased enamel demineralization, such as gastroesophageal reflux disease and Kellogg disease. In the end, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. I wish you have a good day. Bye.